Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on Kibbutz Bris Programmer. Uh, today, uh, I just made this like 10 minute jet. That's how it took like 10 minutes. <laughs> and apparently, it's a bomber. So, yeah. It's a bomber. Where the hell is it? Did I even save it? Wait a second, it's here somewhere. Da la la, hope I didn't pass it. Da, 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 da. Did I not save it? Okay, I didn't save it. Okay, that's just good. That's not it. Ah, oh, oh, there it is. <laughs> I almost forgot I made it. Yeah, it's called the Rockwell B-1 Lancer. Okay, so this is a 10 minute aircraft I just made. It, it's fairly simple. Um, very simple design. It's just got um, two engines back there, just two normal turbo jet engines. I've got these wing connectors that I've just stacked on each other. Uh, sweep wings, random wing there, just for looks as it actually looks in real life. Uh, I've got this here, just like, then again, looks in real life. Um, I've got this here, which I've forgotten what it's called. Small hard point, yep, connected to the small gear bay, because in real life I think small gear bay in the front is actually a bit more larger and you know a bit longer for just for lift right because when we go you will see what will happen um, overall it's not pretty good uh, I've got another wing in here to make sure because it looks a bit ugly for the design in real life it, it goes it has this sort of triangular shape there so I had to do that and it's got this point sticking out and yeah I did it as best as I could well, I could do it even better if I wanted to. But, you know, that would have been only if we could change colors in the game. That would have been awesome. Changing colors. Then we could have an awesome Nighthawk and bombers and whatnot. <laughs> so, um, I even got this, uh, what do you call it? Avionics package, I think? Yep, avionics package. Because, well, that's how the design fitted. And okay, let's let's just test this out. Now I didn't put any separatrons today because gonna be bothered. <laughs> but if you guys like separatrons, because you know if you do like them, comment or something, then I will put them in for you. Special special arrangements. So click T, full throttle, and spacebar. Now it does ha have an early lift off, so I can pretty much lift up now, as you can see. Very nice. Now, before the first time I tested it, because I've only tested it once, every piece disconnected. Like, everything dis dispersed away. But that was because I didn't have any struts. So, yeah, it's always good to, to test without struts and add struts where it's needed. So, I've got a strut connect strut connected to each wing. One, two. Yeah, and you can't really see it, probably because it's a bit shaky and because of the shadow. What we're going to do is attempt to to um, land this thing. Now we do have quite a bit of fuel. That was because of this. And we have fuel here. I think this, yeah, we have fuel for connected directly to the engines. So I click the you know, normal keys. Uh -huh. It's fairly easy to turn, I have to admit. For all aircrafts, the keys are <laughs> pretty simple. When I first started the game, I thought, why the heck is this game so shit? I'm telling you, that's what I thought. Until I was introduced to the avionics package and the ASI SAS. And <laughs> the guy's video that I was watching, his name is, I think it's Kurt Madge or something like that. Yeah, he's pretty popular. He has like 100,000 subscribers. So, yeah, I was watching his video. I wouldn't say he's very good at <laughs> Kibble Space Program, because he's not. I'm slightly more better than him, slightly. And yeah, he sort of got me, helped me out a bit with that. Because I saw in his video he had an SAS. And uh, another guy, his name is Try Dying to Live. Yes, he's pretty popular. He was mainly known for his ultimate Mun landing tutorial. Now, um, just to let you guys know as an update, um, I have landed on. Duna, right? And this is just going to be. I've got a short video that's going to be fast forwarded 
right? Because um, when I was recording it, I was recording it at night time. And okay, we're gonna see the trees down there, so that's good. And because I was recording at night time, I was talking really silently. So I was like, yeah, so this is what we're gonna do. Like that, the whole way through. But anyway, so I pretty much turned off the sound, well, my voice, and the whole way will be fast forwarding the video and playing some random music by some guy named uh, Kevin, Mc Kevin McLeod or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> He's a popular guy that quite a few YouTubers use to um, get songs off. So, yeah. And the tree design here uh, has changed. They do look different. Actually, more realistic. And it's almost as if they actually took a screenshot from a tree. A real tree. An apple tree? Probably. And other, why are they different sizes? Okay, they're all the same tree to me. Yeah, they're the same tree. No difference. That's nice. And what I wouldn't mind seeing on, um, maybe uh, as a game idea, is um, artifacts or something on different planets. So different planets have different artifacts, and then when you visit that the planet, um, you can unlock something else, right? Something like that. That's just a, that's just an idea. Something very advanced, like a uh, UFO type stuff. So um, like anti gravity machine, something like that. Maybe you know. <laughs> I'm not sure if that would be an entirely good idea, but I wouldn't mind trying it. So our landing here was quite nice. We landed in a nice spot right next to the trees. And what is that? Whatever. <laughs> Maybe we can attempt to crash into a tree, which I'm guaranteed sure is hollow. It has nothing inside. We're still going. Still going. <laughs> now, in my video for Duna, damn, it was ridiculous. I, okay, I'm with Jebediah again. So, I went with Jebediah, right, and I actually took him out of the capsule. It wasn't his capsule. Here we go. Okay, it was straight through the tree. Okay, it wasn't his capsule. It was another capsule. Oh, what an early lift off. Anyway, I went over full throttle again. So, um, I took Jebediah out, and he actually, he got stuck, right? And he was just, like, standing on the wing. And then, for some reason, the ship started to roll. So, it started rolling down a hill, up a hill. Like, it was actually rolling up a hill. <laughs> and I couldn't, because of, the, because of the game, I couldn't actually move Jebediah the whole way through. Because... He can't move. He can't get up or move around on something that is moving below him. You get it? Like, if I ejected him now and he was there, I wouldn't be able to move him, unless like the ship, you know, bumped into something and you know it got bumpy. So, and that that's how I actually managed to get Jebediah off by <laughs> by the debumpiness of of uh, rocks on Duna and stuff like that and the hills. Because I noticed there are quite a few hills on Duna. Compared to compared to this planet, Kerbin. I mean, <laughs> well, it didn't, it didn't have a hill like that. That a mountain. That's a huge mountain compared to Duna. But, yes, yeah, so you see that area there? It had small patches of that area. So, small like that. But it was all like red. And, yeah, not bad, actually. I did, I did, uh, <laughs> I took like hundreds of screenshots while I was doing it. So you guys might notice me like that a few of the time. Oh, this is nice. Screenshot. Um, so you click F1 for a screenshot. Then you pretty much check your your um, KSP underscore win folder or your Kerbal Space Program folder where you, where you have all your save files and stuff. And you go to screenshots. There's a folder called screenshots. And I'll double check that now. Just to make sure. Screenshots. Yep, it's in screenshots. Guys, you can hear you click, 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 click. Um, yes. So this is going quite well. Not a bad design. I'm just, I want to go high in altitude. I want to see how it goes pretty high up. Now, with these sort of designs, the only flaw is the weight at the front. There's nothing really at the front holding it. You know what I mean? Like, if I had a wing at the front, um, 
like, like this thing here at the front then I'd be able to control it more because if this part was more heavier if it was more elongated then it'd be that heavy that it'd fall straight down and these wings here back here would really really struggle to hold it up and they'd probably fail so um, another update um, I have been a Juna I want to go to Jewel next and this is all legit this is no mods no cheats and you know that's, that's appropriate and it's quite difficult because of the Rocco Max you know the Rocco Max uh, fuel tanks I think yes liquid fuel tanks there, there aren't any tri-stack couplers for them none and we're going quite fast yeah so there's no tri-stack coupler if there was for that it'd make things much more stable I'd be able to do so many cool things with that my jet design would <laughs> be demolished because I'd change it dramatically and there is a fly in this room hello fly he's in the wall before he was like traveling walking on me you know buzzed it away damn thing so okay so it seems like this is the max speed actually no actually we're falling down now we will increase alright that's good so definitely reach 600 that's what I think okay not bad talk to my friend okay Yeah, in case you guys want to know, I play Minecraft. I have my own server, like, just for like one person, two people, <laughs> and uh, I play with a friend of mine. That's all we do. Every now and then, and I have my assignments. And oh shit, we go fast. Look at that. Unexpected, guys. Really unexpected. Please reach 700. You know, you gotta, you gotta go for the large numbers. 668 six, 668 meters per second this is how fast I can go now what is the speed of sound 200 meters per second I'm, I'm not sure I, please don't tell me off about it <laughs> don't worry I'll find out when take long Wikipedia I can find out now if I want but yeah alright so we're gonna turn off the entrance as protocol goes and we will attempt to glide this bomber because this is apparently a long range bomber so that's awesome now um, the I think it's the Air Force American Air Force they developed a an aircraft that could outspeed bullets um, from really high altitudes and this was like a suborbital aircraft I'm not sure what the name is if you guys know what the name of a craft like that is Apparently it was um, World War Two. Yeah, the Air Force sent aircrafts to spy on on Russia. <laughs> yes, I was scared. And yeah, ru the Russians started shooting him down with machines. But then they introduced, then the um, the Air Force created the the cool suborbital um, bullet dodging aircraft. So that's pretty cool. Damn, this thing glides quite well. Look at that. It's a bit heavy because I have to click S. See how it goes straight down? Pretty good, but now I've seen another design I'm gonna build. I'm, I can't remember the name. Where the wing is actually on an angle. Not straight, but it's on an angle. I'd like to see how that goes. And then the difference. I don't think it's gonna go as well as this. It's probably made for speed. But this is this is quite nice, a very nice design. Uh, it's not as good as the, I think it's the B2 bomber. Yeah, something like that. Or the Antonov or something. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. I want to land. Okay. Let's see how it is. Under pressure. Under pressure. There's a song for that. Lift. Oh, this is pretty good. Yeah, this is really nice. Very nice design. 
And if you're wondering, um, what I used to actually go to Duna, I didn't use a typical rocket. I actually created a very simple jet using a, a small rocket engine, not not a, uh, a turbojet engine, because I don't think that will work on another planet. So a small rocket engine, and yeah, that. That was a bit of an issue at the start because I did crash and I found out what the problem was. The problem was um, the positioning of coming back down to Duna. Now, the, you can either have a curved, like pretend this is Duna, you can have it curved, right, around Duna and land on a certain spot. Okay, we died. Or you can have it like almost like a direct impact to Duna. Now the first two goes, I actually had direct impact to Duna, and I didn't really um, know about that or anything like that, because I thought I'd be gliding around Duna, because there is a bit of air, a bit of atmosphere, but not much. So yeah, then I fixed it up. Okay, um, I can probably check. No, I can't change it. No, I cannot. Now I must not change this. Better not. I was thinking about putting turbojet engines. But air spike rocket, but not that. The fuel's gonna waste pretty quickly. Now with this um, atomic rotor rocket, rocket, rocket motor, I've seen quite a few people use it for landing on other planets. How how good is it? Is it really that good? It's quite heavy. Total mass is, ouch. It's quite a lot. Thrust it has more thrust, but then okay, it makes up for it with the thrust in some planets. Except for Eve. Gimbal range, I don't know what that means. Um, specific impulse in a vacuum. So this seems like it goes quite well in the vacuum. But yeah, I'm not entirely sure about this. Maybe it's good for positioning your aircraft and then you're like having this for landing. Because I think this is the ultimate for landing and this is for space traveling repositioning. So, uh, overall, I'm happy with this. The Kerbal Kerbins or whatever else they, <laughs> they're called. They are happy. Um, I hope you like the design. It's quite simple. I will eventually have an upload link or download link for all the aircrafts. I, read, I do have one, but it hasn't been updated. Right? If you check out the Antonov aircraft, the world's heaviest aircraft I made. Yeah, there's a link in the description there. I might include it in here. It depends. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for watching and have a nice day.